I wanted to go back and, and uh, cover a little bit of the pre-war stuff. Okay. Specifically, having just passed 9-11, so as we're recording this, today is uh, September 12th, mm -hmm. so yesterday was September 11th, yeah. the 18th anniversary of the Trade Tower destruction in mm -hmm. the name of the Religion of Peace. And I thought, my generation remembers clearly that day. That's burned into our memories. Is like you know, this weird collection of like confusion as we yeah. first didn't know what was happening and then this sort of sense of oh my gosh we've been attacked on our own soil uh what was what was it december 7th right mm -hmm. um well pearl harbor mm -hmm. what do you remember about that day oh, and about a lot right, we, well, we were there were six of us going bowling and uh Lori came out of his, he lived across the street from me then, and, um, and he came out and he said, uh, come here guys. So we all came in and and they said that Pearl Harbor had been bombed. No, and we sat there and I said, I gotta go home. And every, we all split, everybody went home. And cause I was thinking of my brother and I thought, oh no. And then my dad came home early from work and he said, see, he was over in France, and he said, oh, no. He says, I don't want you to go through that. And um, so we didn't eat much supper that night. I can remember that. We just sort of sat. And, I, of course, I didn't know too much about a war. And, my, of course, my dad did. Mm -hmm. And um, he started telling us about different things. The Navy in the... In those days, the Navy and the Army sort of were together. And so he was in a small town in France. And uh, they had men that went in first before they went in and cleared off any of the, the hidden bombs or thing. Right. Mr. Kiefer, next door to us, got to talking to my dad once. And my dad told him what town he was in and, and uh, what they were going through when they were pushing the Germans back. He says, we were in that. He says, did anybody get killed? They put bombs in when you turn the light on. And they had one uh, on the toilet. And, and Dad says, no, no, we got experts. He says, they, did, they got them all. He says, oh, that's good. He says, you know, when you're young and you're in the service, you want to kill. Mm -hmm. And he says, then I got older and I thought, why did I want that? And... Uh, my, and my dad, of course, hated with war, too. And he said, yeah, those young kids now are coming up, and they're going to go through the same thing. So now when uh, Tom was drafted, he was in Oklahoma, and he called his dad, and he said, you know, Dad, he says, I, 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 I couldn't shoot. He says, we have to run through the woods, and then there's dummies there, and we have those knives on the Bayonets, thing. Yeah. We're supposed to hit, kill, kill. Mm -hmm. And he says, I couldn't do that. And uh, well, the Lord, of course, rescued him. He would send him to Germany. You didn't have to kill or go do anything like that. But uh, I hope we don't have another war. Well, anyways, my brother was a junior. He was, he, well, he graduated in 43. So he must have been going to be a senior. And um, he wanted to enlist right away. My dad says, no, uh, I won't sign for you. Not, no way. So he was uh, half this mad was, at my dad. This was the, the end of 1941? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you had graduated high school. Yeah. And he was two years younger than you? Uh, he was uh, three, well, two and a half years younger. Well, no, it was well, in, three in and a half. Well, in school, though, like... He, like, I was graduated in 40, he graduated in 43. Oh, okay. And uh, cause he skipped a grade. Oh, okay. And um, so he, uh, so he, he was half man of my dad. Well, then my dad got transferred to Dallas, hmm. and Bud went to a year of SMU, Southern Methodist University. Um, and then he was, he turned 18, when he turned 18... Then he enlisted, and okay. my dad said, "Okay, I'm I'm not guilty of this thing." So then he came to see me. We were in Roswell, and uh, he spent uh, three or four days with us, 
and then he was off to Washington. And uh, because of his eyesight, he memorized the eye chart and uh, so he could get in. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when they discovered his eyes were so bad, they put, they uh, had him to, he had to learn, um, what is that, click, 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 A? Uh, Morse code. Morse code. Yeah. And so he was in, he listened to Turkey o, Turkey o Rose and Sa what was Sally's last band in Germany? Don't remember what they called her, but he heard all these things. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was a code breaker. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, he had to work on codes. Okay. And, uh, so he was a smart guy then. Oh yeah, right. my brother was very smart. Yeah, he uh, he got all the brains. <laughs> I don't think I got all of them. <laughs> Let me, let me back up to the beginning of the story, though. So you and, and a bunch of your friends were planning on going bowling. Mm -hmm. So this is 41, so you've been out of high school for two years now. Mm -hmm. You're working a full-time job, part-time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Downtown, yeah. I yeah. Would, by the time uh, I was there, and uh, what happened was uh, there were just two of us do, doing the, the computer work, mm -hmm. and it was easy, and... Um, so when vacation time came, my my dad said, uh, "I he he gets got got three weeks always," and um, he says, "We're going to California to see Aunt Georgie, my dad, mother, sister," and I said, "Well, I'll see if I can get off," and so I asked him. He says, "No, you had even been here a year," and uh, I said, "Oh, all right." So I told my dad, I said, "Well, I have to stay here." He says, "No, you're going with us." So I went back, and, and he said, just quit. Tell him. He says, but never lie. Tell them why. So I went back and told him. Then I said, I have to quit because my dad said I have to go with him on vacation. And it was a little short Mr. St 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 I can't remember his name. He was a little Jewish, Jewish man, and he said, all right. Betty, when you get back, just give me a call. And so my dad said, oh, he's going to hire you back. And uh, I said, oh, well, okay. So uh, I went to California then, and uh, we had a nice time. In those days, the main street, and I can't remember the name of it, it was a huge, huge street with four streetcars. Mm. And, oh, San Francisco. Uh, mm -hmm, San okay. Francisco. And uh, then, of course, you ride the cable car. That was fun. Because then you get out and help them turn it around and go down again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, had, we had a nice time. So when I got back, uh, I called Mr. Borman. No, Ms. that was started with this. Anyways, I called him and told him I was back. And he says, uh, I called him on a Friday when we got back because my dad had to work Monday. And he says, can you come in Monday and start working again? I said, Yes. So I did. When I get there, he he fired the head girl of the. There were just two of us. Fired her because uh, she was out too. She she decided she's going to take a vacation because I did, and uh, she caught and she kept calling and I'm very ill. And so, oh, so she so, lied about it. So she was back there Friday, and he he fired her. So then Monday when I came in, I went to my old desk. And I thought, gee, Rose is late. And so pretty soon uh, the, a, a fella came by and said, well, he said, uh, you have to go over there now. Ro Ro Rose is, uh, is not coming back. And I said, oh, my goodness. So I had a break in girls. Okay. And uh, I worked there until... When did, uh, until July of 42. Okay. And uh, then I and that's went, when you went to Texas. That's when I went to Texas and we were married. Okay. Mm -hmm. So December 7th, what day of the week is that? Do you remember? Sunday. We're, okay, so you Sunday. hadn't been to work. Mm -hmm. no. um, so w when you guys were all planning on going bowling, was this early in the day? It was in the afternoon. Okay. Because we had gone to church and had lunch. Okay. And... Um, then and we just said, we just sat there for a while. Well, you a said war. that he came out and told you that. Uh, to come in, he, he did he, came, he did he came. hear it on the radio? Or? Yeah, he heard it on the radio. Okay, what exactly yeah. did he say? 
Uh, he just said that uh, we had been bombed. He didn't say anything about a war. Okay. He said we had been bombed. Well, then Roosevelt got on. Uh, so then did you guys listen to the radio? And get yeah, we listened to it for quite a while. Okay. And then they declared war. Okay. So uh, so I went, and I went across the street home, and Bud had come home. And uh, Bud says, well, I think all of this, uh, well, you're... You're, the four of them, Jimmy and Robert and Lori and Bill, the four, that we were all together there Sunday, they all went down Tuesday and enlisted. Lori, okay. if, if he wanted to make sure he could fly. And then Gene, oh yeah, Gene was there. Gene went in the Mechanics Air Force. Robert went to the Marines. And then Bill just signed up with the infantry, I guess it was. And uh, so they had to, your dad, uh, your grandfather, um, that was in December. And then on January 27th, he was called and uh, was sent down to Texas to learn to, to fly. And, uh, and he was an instructor, became an instructor. He thought he'd get overseas, but he didn't. Okay, so... So we declared war on Germany and or Japan? No, um, just, just Japan at that time. Just Japan, okay. Mm -hmm. So when did, we, when did we know we were involved with fighting the Nazis and all of that? What, how much longer until? Uh, they sunk a couple of ships, I think. Because it was, I think it was 1942 when we sent troops uh, over to Europe, wasn't it? I can't, I can't remember when we were to Germany. I, I was concentrating on what was going on in... Uh, with the Japs, okay, and uh, well, I can't remember now. So, here's what I wanted to ask about that general time period. So, World War II, like looking back on it now, we know how it ends. Mm -hmm. You know, we beat the Nazis. Hitler dies. You know, yeah. but at the time, was everybody in America confident that we were going to win this, or was there any kind of no confusion way we or were going to win because it, they, we were glued together. The whole country was glued. And uh, everybody wanted to, to help what they could do. The fellows were listed in a line to go in. To go in. And if there was a 4F, huh, what's wrong with you? And really, because I had two fellows that want to date me and I wouldn't do it because they were 4F. And, um, okay, for, for those which of us. Is, which is, that's how young I was. I mean, you did. And, uh, what, what is the 4F? 4F is uh, they, uh, they either had a bad heart or something was wrong. They, okay. they wouldn't accept him in the service. So you need to date a guy who couldn't get into the Army. Yeah. Oh, man. And, uh, I, I, can, I can respect that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, everybody worked. Everybody wanted so much. To, they, I mean, we never even thought of losing, never. Okay. And, I, and then when we got in with the Germans, we never thought of that we were going to lose. More to, more to do. Okay. You know, one of the fellas here, well, of course, all these fellas were here were in World War II, and um, Judge, he says they would work, uh, never stop on a, as they were making the planes. Mm. Their crew would stop, and there's the other ones crew waiting to get in, round the clock. He says they could finish a B-17, I think he said, in three days, if I'm not mistaken. It is impressive how they could crank out airplanes. I mean, the, the manufacturing that yeah. happened in this country yeah. as a result of that was just remarkable. And uh, then, of course, they were, they'd uh, designed the B-29. They had to have something bigger to get to, to Tokyo. And then, oh, yeah. So then he, inst uh, your grandfather instructed in the B-29. Okay. Uh, and also, I'll tell you what the fellas did. Uh, when the class was over with, there was always a list there uh, if, you know, if you want to sign up to go overseas. He always signed that slip. He wanted to get over there and fight. Well, he never did. They, uh, the general kept... The ones that were stabilized, and were and the, the record showed that who was good, because the students, as before they left, uh, would write what they what they thought of their instructor. 
And uh, so he said one day, he says, May I, maybe I'll stand on my head and say, I don't know how to teach. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. He says, yeah, everything above my, my, my pockets, and then they'll say, well, something's wrong with him. and can't teach anymore. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, Gil got over it. Gil had to wait, I think, six months to get in the service. So where but did he wind up? He was uh, he were, he was in um, first in Africa. He flew a B twenty five. Now this is my grandfather's brother. Yeah. Okay. And older or younger? I don't remember the order. Hmm. Was was he older or younger? Oh no, young, younger. He was my younger age. Brother. Okay. And uh, he went in and. So he flew the kind of planes that that my grandfather was teaching people how to fly. No. Oh, it was a different kind of bomber. Different one. Oh. He. Uh, your grandfather was instructing in 17s and 29s, and then uh, the B-25s, that was B-24s. You were a plane spotter, too. Don't forget to tell him that. Oh, well. So that's... Oh, well, you, had, you had mentioned that. You were living in California, and you had mm -hmm. something to do with, like, you were keeping an eye on the coast to make sure that the Japanese didn't... Yeah. So yeah, tell well, me about it, that. We were... If there was a, a shack up in the mountains and, and with the phone and everything, and then the description of all the planes, the shape of the, the Japs. Okay, so and is, this, uh, is this 42, 43? Where are we at? Where are we now? Let me see. I he, mean, you got, got his, uh, October 43, we were sent to uh, Merced. Okay. So that was then. And um, <laughs> then they, they came around. Uh, oh, we, re we had a house in Merced. And uh, one day a lady came around and she says, we, we're, uh, she said, you can vote, can't you? You want to sign up? And I said, yeah. And so I put down 1922. She said, well, you're only 19. You can't vote. I said, what do you mean I can't vote? She said, you have to be 21 for, for the city of Merced. Huh. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, dear. And uh, she looked at me. And she said, for heaven's sake, 19. And as she's going away, 19, <laughs> she, I could hear her. <laughs> okay, so living living in, I'm sorry, Marset? Merced. Merced, okay. I'm mm -hmm. not that familiar with California. Mm -hmm. So. The same one, Keene Valley. So you were, so my grandfather's teaching people how to fly, mm -hmm. and you've spent time on the coast watching mm -hmm. for planes. Mm-hmm. All right, so how did you get involved with that? Do you remember? Uh, well, we were living then in Lemmingston, which was about 10 miles from Merced. You couldn't, we couldn't get, get a house in, in um, Merced. And uh, a lady came around, and she asked anybody if they'd like to help uh, watch for the enemy planes. And I said, I would. And so that's how then they, they took me up to the shaft. I were uh, my uh, shift was uh, four hours, and so I worked uh, from. I was picked up because I didn't have a car. Um, if, from eight, they picked me up at seven thirty or so, to get up there into the mountains, and um, uh, yeah, I, and I, my, my the other ship would leave when I came, and uh, then when he was transferred to Roswell. Well, I, I had to tell them, and they said, oh, I, I told them two weeks before so they could find somebody because it was very important. And um, they had not spotted any. They had spotted submarines, but no planes. Oh, wow, okay. And um, so... So you spent four hours, what, every day or a couple times a week? No, once a week. Once a week, okay. Mm -hmm. So they had a lot of volunteers for this. Yes. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, they had a line of them. Okay. Yeah. And you would just, what, sit with binoculars and watch the skies? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was in the, I had the mornings ones. I don't know if there was anybody there for night. I, I have no idea. They couldn't see the plane. I don't know what they did then. I don't know. Listen yeah. for it, maybe. And then one time, we women are from our squadron were in Leighton Merced. We decided to go have a picnic there. Our men were flying. And all of a sudden we looked up, and there was planes circling. We said, uh-oh, somebody crashed. And so we started, they had a big number on the planes. Lori's was 122. 
So we started telling him, there's 105, Chrissy's okay. And I couldn't find 122. And so he was, uh, what I forgot to remember, he was at auxiliary field that day. So we got in the car and we looked at the planes to find where it was. And we uh, followed. Then the one that would bring the ambulance would fly and to show them a quick route to where it is. Well, we found it too, and uh, nobody was got out, so we knew he was dead. So they, in those days, they just had a seat belt. They didn't have anything here. Really? So when you crashed, you smacked into the panel. Wow, early days, so, okay. So, that was something. So, uh, the, you're living in California at this mm -hmm. point, Is, and that's when my grandfather took you flying into the Grand Canyon? No, I never went in the Grand Canyon. Oh, he you did. didn't go? Okay. He did. I know. Was that with his students or on his free time? No, no. He just, they, uh, when the weekend came, they could fly the front seat, which they loved because they were all tensed up with students. And um, so most of them would take a plane and just fly someplace. Well, he, he decided to go and see the Grand Canyon. Well, he did, and uh, he had to watch for wires. To, if, if one caught on his wing, down he'd go. Mm -hmm. Well, he came out all right. And uh, then the, there was another field in um, Turlock. Well, I can't remember the name of the town. Uh, another airfield, and some of those fellas tried it. Two were killed. They hit the wires. And from then on, boy. Oh, they would be, be court by show. Yeah, start so, cracking down on it. Yeah. So, so. I said, see what you shouldn't have done? <laughs> he says, well, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah. story made me want to, uh, to back up the story a little bit further. So, um, mm -hmm. like, I show up in the story in the, like, mid-'80s. Like, I'm, I'm just starting to be aware of anything and everybody. Yeah. So, you know... One of the questions I wanted to ask was, what was he like when you guys first met? Like, what was it about him that made you not only decide to, you know, go on that second date, but eventually marry him? Well, he had a dry sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we, when we knew we, we were stuck with, we'd have to go out together. So we thought, well, we'll make the best of it. So the next, was it next Saturday or the Saturday after that, I think, I think I had a date. And... Um, we went bowling, and he was so funny. We had so much fun. And uh, so he said, uh, how about uh, going to church with me tomorrow? I said, I don't go to church. <laughs> and he says, oh, OK. So then the following week, he said it was the third date. I, I don't remember. And he said, uh, "He says you, you're going to church tomorrow. I'll pick you up. At what was it, 10.30 or something? And then it's this, and from there, we're going to come back to my house. My, my mother's making the dinner. And off he went. Yeah. Well, I came in, slammed the door, and I said, how dare he think he can boss me around? And I said, if he calls, I'm not home. And my mother says, what did he do? She, I said, he wants me to go to church. She says, well, for heaven's sake, it's gold. And I said, well, I said, I don't even know where he goes. And uh, so she said, go. If he's going to pick you, what time? I said, 1030. So I went. And I said, oh, I'm, doc I'm supposed to come to, to his mother's house for dinner. So they, lived, they bought my aunt's house. So right. they, he lived across, across the, street. the street. So uh, well, she wanted to meet me because he had told her, this was the fourth or so, I don't know what date it was, he was going to marry me. That was the girl he was going to marry. Oh, wow. And so she wanted to meet me. And if I wasn't a Christian, she was going to start praying. Boy, when she prays, things happen. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, <laughs> so and I met her and his father, very nice people. And uh, from then on, if I'd wait, see so her, were, I'd wait. Were you not familiar with his parents before you started dating? Mm-mm. -mm. Like they had lived across the street. For they a year lived or two, across the street, but no, I I was I worked. Okay. And uh, when I come home, 
I have supper and then meet my girlfriends, we would walk up to the Blue Room, which was on th uh, 3rd and York. It was um, a, ca a kid's hangout. Okay. And, uh, and we would go up there and meet some of our friends and, and uh, then walk back home. And uh, we needed the walking after sitting all day in an office. Yeah. So, uh, so you didn't meet his parents until he had told them that he was going to marry you. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's quite an introduction. Yes. <laughs> now, and I didn't know that, of When course. did you find out he had told them that? I didn't until we were very, I don't know how many years. His okay. mother told me. <laughs> and, I, and so I asked Lori, and he says, yeah. He says, uh, I said, how were so, you were so sure of that? And he says, I fell in love with you, and that was it. Wow. And so, <laughs> so that was it. So, wow. it, it, uh, so he had a good sense of humor. He mm -hmm. made you laugh. Yeah. And apparently he was also very smart. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. I need to ask about his job, too. I, I talked to Mike about this, and apparently both of us were just under the impression that he was an architect. Probably because... No, no, no. Well, Not, But he had designed and built your house, and... Like engineer, architect, I guess as children our brains just went, that's eh, the yeah. same thing. So what did he do? Because apparently he, I don't know. He designed, uh, drew uh, walking drag lines. Do you know what a walking drag line is? No. I tried looking it up. Well. It's something to do with uh, mining. Lines. Uh, the, bucket, the buckets could be 24 yards, 50 yards, and then they would have to uh, draw the weights so that they could carry, you know, plus the weight, and um, so he did that. Then he became um, chief, our, uh, dra uh, not draftsman, air engineer there, and he had men, draftsmen underneath him. And this is page engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, Where was that located? Do you remember where the office was that he worked at? Because it wasn't in Elmhurst, right? No, 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 it was page engineering. Um, do you remember where it was? The what now? The office, Page Engineering. Where was your father's office? Um, it was out east. And, um, it was east, that's all I remember. Displains, or was it Displains? It was out that way? No. <coughs> uh, no. It's, uh, it was the path he passed down his grove. Is I remember that. I don't know where. I probably went to the office. I'll have to look it up. I only went to the yeah. office one. So he designed the equipment used by miners, so mm -hmm. by people doing mining. Yeah. <laughs> Not children. Yeah. Um, well. So, but, the, I mean, was that the majority of his career was actually designing things, or was he an right. administrative he, role? He, or? he designed them, and then uh, when he became chief engineer there, why, uh, he he would check all the draftsmen. If his name, initials weren't there, the uh, men in the ship wouldn't use it, because a couple of them tried to get them through. And... Um, so uh, they they knew this. I mean, they they knew his writing, and what he did, he uh, how did he do it? Up there, there would be three or four pages. I can't I can't remember what, how he, he. Anyways, he did something else so that they could check that too, and uh, so one of the fellows, uh, he was an Indian, Saeed. Um, brought this to him, and Dad, Dad says, uh-uh, it has to have more weight on the uh, because the, it would crash with that size bucket they want. Hmm. And he says, no, it won't. And he didn't like my dad, uh, or my, or Lori. And uh, so he, uh, he, uh, how did he do that? Lori would uh, uh, initial it, so he took it to the chief engineer who relied on Lori. Oh, Mr. Page was dead by that time. Mm -hmm. So Bill he and uh, Mr. Page just had the three daughters. So the three sons, the sons, uh, son-in-laws uh, took over. Unbelievable. <laughs> the president was Bill, who had been a cowboy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, me and I, and that's where uh, the, his, her, her name was Billy, and, he, and his name was Bill. Bill and Billy. And uh, she married him. He didn't know anything about engineering or anything else. But he was president. Okay. Became and the so, cowboy uh, president of the engineering company. Yeah. So then he hired the, the chief engineer who didn't know what he was doing either. So he relied on Lori 
And he said, I'll see that you get the same pay as I do. He said, just take over. And so <laughs> he did. He took over. And so uh, when the, the blueprints for this Indian came through, he forgot to look for the initials. So oh. he put it through. Oh, no. And he put it through. And, uh, oh, and the Indian said, don't forget to initials. He said, oh, yeah. And he initialed it. And uh, I don't know whether he thought Lori forgot or what, what, what was, was on his mind. Mm -hmm. But he knew if the initials weren't there, he should send them back. But it, anyways, it went through. So uh, the company sued Page. And, uh, and Lori says, yeah, they're right to do that. And they were going to get out of it. The, the lawyer angled it somehow. And Dad says, no, I won't lie. He says, it was his fault, and that's it. So when the trial came up, uh, all of a sudden, they uh, told Lori he had to go down to Florida and do this, take care of which he was going to do in a couple of months. So we went down there in Florida, not knowing the trial was on. Mm -hmm. And uh, they whether they decided they didn't need him or or they kept his name out of it. I don't. We don't know. And uh, we were there for six weeks. So of course, we're with Jitty and Gil. Mm. And uh, so we do, uh, we I, I we don't know exactly how. But when the trial was over, within they just said, uh, "How are you doing?" He says, "Well, I got another week here." And uh, so then he came home. Then he found out that the trial had, uh, was through. And. Uh, they had fired Saeed. I and, imagine uh, so. So, but, uh, so then when he retired, uh, two, two companies wanted him to come and work for them. One was from downtown. He would have had more money. And the other was in LaGrange, I think. And he took that one because he didn't want to leave, travel back and forth. And wasn't as much money, but... The kids were all married. We had never much money anyhow, so so he uh, he went and then uh, he worked till he was seventy five. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Then he he loved engineering, absolutely loved it. And uh, that's good. Seems so, that he must have been smarter than me because I don't think I could do it. Well, he loved figures. He had a slide rule, oh. and then by that time they had it on the computer. Oh sure. And uh, he didn't like that. He wasn't sure that they were doing it right. <laughs> so know. he always had a slide rule there. He'd check them and to make sure. And mm -hmm. uh, somebody caught, uh, one of the young fellas from college caught, he said, what are you doing with that? He says, it's a slide rule. Don't you have one? No. no. He said, didn't you get it in college? No. And so, <laughs> so he just... In fact, I've got a slide rule in there. I just couldn't part with it because I, he carried it with him wherever he went. So your, your generation was taught how to figure things out on their own. My generation is being taught to rely on the app. Yeah. If the app is wrong, we won't know how to correct it. Mm -hmm. We like Eventually, when the robots take over, my generation will be the ones that go, all right, good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I know. So you were a Cubs fan. Was he into sports too? Did he follow the Cubs? Not or? too much. He wasn't a sports person at all. He he read a lot, but uh, what did he read? What was his genre? Oh, whatever my brother would send him. My brother would read the last report of politics or whatever. We, I don't know what it was, and uh, then he would read it and send it to um, who got it first? Rusty, Bud's one of Bud's sons. And uh, so we, uh, he liked to read. He didn't read too much, but uh, he he did not like sports really. Okay. He. Uh, That's where I get it from. He thought he it was a, he sports. thought it was a waste hockey. of time. He played hockey. And he had played in hockey and stuff, ice skating and. Oh yeah, he went ice skating. He took the kids ice skating, skating, skating and everything. He was a good ice skater. Yeah, he was very good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so he was athletic. He just didn't follow professional sports. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, because I mean, you paid attention to what the Cubs were doing for a long time. Oh yeah. Played yeah. Ball yeah. I knew every player. 
Okay. And uh, their averages and everything, because I liked it, but then I got rid of it. I dropped it then. I never did. So. I never understood it. <laughs> oh, well, my dad used to take us on Ladies' Day, because my mother got in free. Nice. And uh, so that would be on a Friday. And that was during the day. There, were, there yeah. weren't night games then mm -hmm. yet. My dad's day off was Friday. All right. So, well, so we fun. had a good time. Did you guys go and go downtown and watch the Cubs game at Wrigley? I'm no. When you were a kid? Were adult, no. no. Oh, yeah? When we were little. Okay. No, we didn't, because he didn't like it, so um, he, uh, he never bothered it. But then Larry came up, and he liked it at Lake. So he said, well, oh, I true. guess I'm going to have to take him to a baseball game. <laughs> and I know he was bored so, so you know what? just sitting there. As a father, I know sometimes you have to do things for right. the kids okay. that are not yours. And, no, and, yeah, like and then he wanted this, Tom or Larry wanted to see the Sox play. And so uh, he says, okay, we'll find out where they are. And so he took him to that. He, he, was, he was a good father, you know, that's, that's the reason he did this. Mm -hmm. I can get that. Are you traveling somewhere? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Sam's taking off. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, I'm just trying to get a, a picture of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, in, in terms of the 40s, yeah, I guess having not been there, like I, you know, I get, we, uh, when Desert Storm kicked off, I remember where I was. I was in Elmhurst on, what is that, St. Charles, just crossing over Spring Road on my way to youth group. I was on my way to youth group listening to the radio, and I heard that, you know, the whole Desert Storm thing. We had sent troops yeah. to Iraq, Kuwait. Troy was in that. Yes. And I remember vividly where that was, and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, America's at war. And I kind of, like, had that moment of panic. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember following that, like, yeah, we were confident. That you know we weren't afraid we were going to lose that. Yeah. But looking back, the this sort of size and scope of what the Nazis were doing and their involvement with the Italians and the Japanese and the fact that it spread into you know, Africa and into Russia, I didn't know if maybe there was ever any sense that you know we wouldn't win. But like you said, the, we just seemed confident that Definitely. everyone was going to do their part and we were going to win this and that was it. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Well, uh, there was a general that was in a, a conference with, from France and, and England, you know, and they got together. And the Frenchman said, I don't know why I always have to speak English. And so uh, the, the American said, well, if we uh, don't speak English, he said you would have been talking German by now. <laughs> that's, true. Uh, that's a good that's answer. That's funny because it's true. <laughs> All right, so um, if if I'm getting my dates right, mm -hmm. Pat was actually born while the war was still going on. Oh yeah, right, and ended in '44, and she was born in '45, right? So you were no, born no. here. No, uh, no, she was born in forty, forty. Pat was 43, born in forty-five. Yeah, right. 45. So right, forty-four. The war. Well, the war was born still born on because she was she was born in Roswell. Yeah. Okay. When did when did it end? Well, she was born in. in April and didn't it end in October? When did the war end? In October, wasn't it? Forty-five. I don't know. They're in the. Uh, Forty-five. I think yeah. I remember. Yeah, it was right after, like months after I was born. Cause it yeah. Cause it the, ended after you were born. People. Yeah. I think so. I thought it was forty-four. It ended. Hmm. So none of us are historians, apparently. <laughs> well, I could. If I you ask me about Star Wars, I could tell you more appropriately. I mean, it was it was almost. Well. Uh, Totally, officially ended after, I think. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. I think she okay. was... People were so happy that I was born that they just said, oh, peace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if a child this beautiful can be born into this world, what is that to fight about? Fight. Let's yes, be brothers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I okay, like so it. my mother ended the war. Yeah, right. Just by being the most beautiful child ever born. <laughs> um, so Tom was born... In forty-seven, mm -hmm. so he was born. You were two, almost two. You were mm -hmm. turned two later than that. Yeah, almost. Okay, so I, I got to go through the timeline here again because when Pat and my mother were born, mm -hmm. you were living in Roswell, New Mexico, mm -hmm. and my grandfather was still working for the Air Force, still yep. teaching mm -hmm. uh, pilots. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so so Tom was born in forty seven. So mm-hmm. somewhere mm-hmm. around my mother's birth, as the world rejoices, <laughs> the war ends. Now you moved from Roswell to where? Uh, to Dallas. My folks were living there, so we were looking for a house. Okay. And uh, he was going. Uh, Laurie was going to SMU. He finished his semester. We didn't like Texas, so we up and moved. Why didn't you like Texas? I don't know. The okay. bugs and, and uh, the people, uh, I don't know what it was. And I like the bugs, right, because I played out and stood on my head. Yes. <laughs> she stood on her head know. and full of the, uh, red bugs. Oh, the fire ants? Oh, oh. fire ants, yeah. Standing and, on my head. Uh, and the, well, anyway, Challenge. we moved. and. Uh, so you came back up here. Yes, right. Well, not, not directly here. You went to Peoria. Well, no, we came directly to um, to Elmhurst and uh, with his oh. mother, and uh, he went to Northwestern, and they were filled. They the, they had too many. Then he tried, he tried a couple more, and he said he wanted an engineering college, and so he wanted said, to build airplanes. Yeah. Okay. And so no, he didn't. Then he 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 wanted he was an aeronautical engineer in, in Iowa State. But he did, he had enough planes right then, okay. so he went to their general engineering, and then okay. into structural, and uh, so we went to Bradley, and they had these, uh, uh, oh, what do they call them? The trail these trailers, were oh, yeah. the, uh, remember they they yeah. we had, they had they were lines of them, and uh, the te- and they there. had teachers. Hmm? Yeah, for pilots. Yeah, and uh, the, and one of the teachers said, uh, you know, the fellows that come back from the war, they want to learn. The other kids are just having a ball. <laughs> and, uh, so right, it has a different value yeah. to different and people. And then I have his, t- uh, in the, one of the albums, have a picture of him and the other engineering, outstanding engineering, because they have got such good grades. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, he was an achiever. I mean, he everything. wanted to learn, and these guys did. Wow. So. Okay, so was did he have a mind to go toward uh, doing mining equipment? Was that something that interested him, or did he just wind up at Pace because that yeah, was he where worked, the job was? Well, he worked in um, in Peoria for A. Lucas and Son. I don't know what they did now. I can't remember. But um, and he he told them he said he was in school, and he says. Whatever it is, we'll adjust where you work. The boss was wonderful. So when he had classes in the morning, he could work in the afternoon, classes in the afternoon, and so on. And nice. they were so nice to him. So when he got the job with um, Paige, they had to have something made. So he called A. Lucas and son. And, called, and uh, he says, I don't know if you remember me. And he says, yeah, yeah, how you doing? He told me, he says, Listen, we got a job here. I think you can handle. And so he came in to, to talk to Laura and to see what it was. He was so excited. When, uh, so Lori tried so hard to help him mm. after he helped him, you know, because uh, he wouldn't. Who was going to take a kid to finish school and then also give him hours whenever he could work? Sure. You know, so. So. Okay, so, so, so that's in Peoria, you said. Mm-hmm. So you have three kids at that point. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you were just stay-at-home mom then. I was home for, with the kids. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what were they like? <laughs> Do I need to have her leave the room so you can be honest? <laughs> Go out of the room, please. <laughs> Don't. Just kid. Well, we lived next door to Jamerson's, and they had three boys. I remember. And them. the kids remember you. They had a ball together, and so oh, yeah. the kids played. And uh, did we, they play outside a lot? Mm-hmm. Okay. We were really did you have a television? Hmm? No. Did you have a television? Television. What's that? Um, not yet. It's the thing that tells Your us how field. to think and feel. They didn't have that then. <laughs> <laughs> if they, no, we didn't have a phone. We were, I, and I you was canning. Uh, we didn't have a phone. If, if my mother wanted me, she called Joe Jameson and oh. said, would you deliver a message? I, I, I was cutting down on expenses 
And so then I had a garden, and then my mother bought a bushel of peaches and blimps and another kind, of, and we canned everything so that oh, I'd have yeah. food for the winter. We went barefoot until we were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Uphill both ways and the snow. <laughs> so, but we made it. He had two years yet to finish school, and so he finished. So you had three children, mm -hmm. no television mm -hmm. and no phone. Mm -hmm. Did you have a radio? Do we had a radio. Tell them about cribbage. <laughs> oh, well, that was when you were in high school. Oh, no. We were, I yeah. thought we were at Yorkfield. Was oh. it Yorkfield? Yorkfield or, it was grade no. school. It was grade school. Because we were like, anyway, she was trying to entertain us, but she get, remember you had headaches? We didn't even know about it, but you had headaches. So she would play, get us going, playing and stuff. Yeah. But, um, no, we were in either late or grade school, but. So she taught us this game that we still don't know how to play, but it's called cribbage. But you made up your own rules. Well, I don't know how to play cribbage. <laughs> but I was, they, they were getting feisty and they didn't know what to do. And, and so and I had a headache and I thought, oh gosh, if I have to have quiet. Got migraine. And um, so I said, we're going to play cribbage. I couldn't even, my head hurt so I could hardly see the cards. So we played. I don't know. To this day, I don't know what I did. But we played for hours, but we had no idea what we were doing. But I didn't either. I just, <laughs> my imagination was good. You just so came up with some rules. I kept them entertained. That's yeah. where the imagination comes <laughs> from. Well, there you go. She still yeah, does that. It was hours. We loved yeah. it. <laughs> Sometimes you got to make up the rules as you go. Yeah, she did. Um, okay, so hold on. From Peoria, so wait, from Dallas to Elmhurst, Elmhurst to Peoria. Mm hmm. Peoria to Yorkfield? To uh, Yorkfield. Mm -hmm. Where is Yorkfield? Yorkfield um, is just... If you go York Road to south, you know, have you been down there? Where you come yeah. to Butterfield? Or toward toward you know where Butterfield is? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're on Butterfield and York. Just keep going down York, and then the first light, we were off to the left. It was, a, it was called Yorkfield. It was just a division, so very small. Yeah. Right next to the church. Place. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's still... Mm -hmm. Considered Elmhurst as far as post office. Oh, it's still technically it's, yeah. it's a neighborhood of Elmhurst. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is called Yorkfield, yeah. So, yeah. so when did you wind up on that that house on Prospect? Well, he he drew up the plan, the plans, and checked them all over, and they took them to the. We had to get permission from the building officer in the in the we con, the, con, in the console, I think it was. Do you remember uh, what year it was? Elmhurst, roughly. Hmm? What year, roughly? Well, I was in uh, kindergarten. 50, I went to kindergarten in let's see, we were building in 52. 52? Be yeah, oh. because Aditi was born then. So it was after she well, was she born. Well, she was born when we were at Yorkfield, because I remember I brought yeah, my class that, over. Yeah, that's, no, oh. that's, that's oh, right, oh, right, but yeah, we, okay, so, yeah. yeah, but we were, we, um, we started building. Yeah, okay, and right, we, right, he, right, right, he was right. his own contractor. Okay, so, he, so he give me hired, the details. This is probably where I got confused about his career. So he designed the house? Mm hmm So he drew up the blueprints? Mm hmm So did he, did he hire builders then? He was a professional engineer. Uh -huh. So he had a stamp, and he could stamp things. So he stamped them afterwards uh, because he was an engineer. He didn't have to be an architect. I don't know whether you do now or not. So he just took it. I have the blueprints have still. The blueprint. You used to have the blueprints. Oh, yeah. And my, one of my friends, Billy Joe and Al, he designed their house, too. They yeah, he did too. there. And then he designed um, a, a Ford place uh, in Middlelothian. Was it dealer Middle uh, yeah. He He wanted to uh, buy a bigger space. So my dad came in there because he, he said, give me an idea what you want. Mm -hmm. And he That's drew great. up their plans. Your dad. So. Wow. So, so he, he kind of was an architect, just not very often. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, he was both. He could do an actually he could do anything. And uh, when we I started working with ceramics, uh, he said you have to have two twenty. So he showed uh, Tom how to do that. So he wired two twenty in it. I have no idea what he did. But uh, they put 220 uh, in them for me. For the pottery wheel. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Or not 220, just 20, isn't it? Just 20 and 15, yeah, 20. I don't actually know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't either. 
<laughs> All I know is he said this. Uh, he says I'll fix it for you. I'm, electricity <laughs> is that one area of science that my brain just goes, no, nah, I don't need to know that. <laughs> like so, no matter how many times I read about it, my brain just goes, don't need to keep any of that. So I'm. <laughs> I have to tell you something. When you came to stay with us, you know, you were in college. Mm. He was delighted. Yeah. And then when he heard you were leaving, he says, why does he have to get married and leave us? <laughs> no, really, he was serious. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, don't get sick, because he was this way when Patsy got married. He wanted oh, yeah. his family with him all the time. And he said, she doesn't have to get married. And uh, he said, she can she just date him. Well, and, you guys uh, got married. He got sick, remember? I had him in bed. He had bleeding ulcers. Oh. And uh, so... When she got married, I thought, oh, what am I going to do? So we, I put him on the diet that the doctor gave me. I told him what was going on. And um, so he, he got through that all right, except afterwards he got a little sick because he said he... Uh, so sorry. Yeah. The guy didn't deal with stress very well. So, Thankfully, he, I didn't He never took that. stress very well. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I inherited that too. Mm. You'd never know it. Mm -hmm. I'm always such a ball of sunshine. <laughs> uh, I totally forgot what I was thinking. Um, okay, so that takes us up to living in the house that I'm familiar with from 1952. Mm -hmm. Now you have four kids. Mm -hmm. And that lasts for seven years. Yeah. Then okay. I have Larry. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Now I... Again, I've only got like little bits and, and pieces of stories from them. Apparently, Aunt Pat raised spiders. Like she had a oh, collection yeah. of animals and stuff. Yeah, she had spiders and what else did she, she liked have? insects? Well, she had kept. I wish she had kept all of it, but she kept insects. You know, where you put them and mount them. Yeah. When my grandma, her mom went to to Hawaii or whatever, she bought a bunch of seashells, really nice. And Pat kept hers all mounted. I had mine for a while. Yeah, and she had an elephant's um, tooth. She had a brain. Remember? Yeah, she had all bugs, all kinds of bugs. Um, but yeah, she was very interested in. Uh, I thought she'd be a scientist. In entomology or whatever. No. Well, she went into nursing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She was always related. wanted to be a nurse. So. She oh yeah always wanted oh, yeah. to be. We shared a room, and that's all yeah. she talked about. Yeah. Want to be a nurse. So. So. Well, we yeah, we had there. spiders. I mean, what else did we have in, down there? Well, we had them in the basement. Oh. Mm. Well, yeah, she, but you're supposed uh, to kill them. You're not supposed to put them in a what a terrarium or something. Well, she had them and put them in jars, and she had, we had jars galore, didn't we? Yeah. And then she I, yeah. thought, I thought they were baby buggy. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So she just, like, collected things to study and then yeah. eventually pinned to a board. She studied, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. She went to the library, and then when my mother got cancer, I said, my, uh, my grandma's got cancer. And uh, so she didn't say anything. She just took off. And so when she came back, I said, where were you? She said, I went to the library. Cancer, she's going to die. So she had she read all about, about cancer. She studied everything. And going yeah. to the library was a long walk. She just was always walking everywhere. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. yeah. I'd forgotten. The library has, has changed. Well, I mean, it's in the same general park, but... Oh, it's so pretty now. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't. Yeah. I had forgotten it. Again, I told you, I was, I was doing research. I found old pictures of Elmhurst, and I forgot the library was in that other building. Yeah. My oh, friend Danny right, used yeah. to work there. The big building up on the hill, kind of. It's, it it well, belonged to a very rich market. family. Yeah, it was a mansion. And uh, it was a mansion. And when they he died, everybody else had gone, and his uh, his kids or something didn't want it. I don't know how it worked. Anyway, he gave he donated it to uh, El, the city of Elmhurst. Right. And they made a, a, a library out of it. Well, that library is... They built a new building mm -hmm. near that, and now that building could be... Rented out as a mansion for weddings and parties and stuff. Oh, is I, that right? I, I went didn't to a know wedding that. reception there some oh. handful of years ago. It's very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fewer books now, but bigger spaces. <laughs> um, all right, so Pat was always determined to be a nurse, and she collected <laughs> animals and various specimens. Mm -hmm. What did this one do? <laughs> Baseball, basketball. Ba yeah, really? ice skate. Oh, she was a beautiful ice skater. Boy, could she ice skate. When she got rheumatic fever, she was in bed, and Patsy said, we're going ice skating, and she looked at him, she said, maybe someday I can get as good as Janice. I mean, she, she just tried so hard to keep up with her with athlet athletics. Patsy had two left feet. <laughs> oh, oh, 
she strained her neck. Oh, this is one. She strained her neck. Now I had Dee Dee in, in grade school, uh, Janice in junior high, and Patsy in, uh, in uh, high school. Okay. And she says, hello, this is the school nurse. She said, we have your daughter here. We think she broke her neck. Mm. And I said, it's a good thing I don't panic. Right. And I said, what school is this? Well, it's New York. I said, well, I have two other daughters mm. in different schools. Now tell me about this. And so she says, well, and I said, now I know where the nurse's office is. Where did this happen? In the gym. And I said, and how did she get to the nurse's office? Well, she walked. I said, she didn't break her neck then. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and so I said, all right, I'll call the doctor. So I called Dr. Gutzord. He laughed. Mm -hmm. And he says, is that nurse from York? And I said, yes. No. Oh, forget it. He said, she's <laughs> evidently well, strained it, you know, or whatever they do. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, I said, well, I'm going to go and get her now. And he, I said, I didn't know whether to take it to her or whether to the hospital or what. He said, don't bring her home, put ice on it. And so I brought her home, and uh, I thought, that screwy nurse, <laughs> instead of saying, oh, this is the nurse from York High School, you know. Yeah. Uh, Not everybody's good at communicating. Yeah. I've no. learned. All right. All right, here. All right. Let's take a short break while we wait for the vacuum out in the hallway to stop. <laughs> 